our team does monthly surveys kind of at the end of each month on sell through trends for iPhones in the North American market. And on this month's survey, one, the smartphone demand remained a weak overall, but two, within the mix, we just saw much weaker demand for the iPhone XR than what we anticipated and what was in our model. So that's what led to us uh, reducing our estimates today. Mike, is this a proprietary survey that you do, and what's the track record of that survey in uh, recent years? Yeah, it's a, I've covered the group for uh, 15 to 20 years, so we've been doing this monthly for a long time. So it's got a, a good track record on mix. It is North America only based, so it kind of builds to our mosaic of overall demand for phones. Uh, but what we saw that surprised us within the survey is, one, um, the mix still was, believe it or not, higher to the new expensive phones, so consumers were still preferring the 10s or the 10s Max, or even some of the more discounted older iPhone models like the old 10 or the iPhone 8. The XR just had uh, more muted and tepid sales than we thought, so that's what really changed in, in our model. So we took, a, took a iPhone sales down for 2019 and 2020 uh, based on weaker XR demand than what we expected in North America. But, I mean, they did come out, Apple came out yesterday and said it was one of its top-selling phones. Does this have anything to do with the fact that, that Apple stopped, announced that it's going to stop uh, reporting the exact figures for shipments? Yeah, I think, I think they're trying to feed into the XR. I think on a global basis with price elasticity and a lower price point, I could see it being better. But in North America, you know, the feedback was pretty clear across the survey that uh, consumers were still liking the other models versus this new XR model it just hasn't done as well as we thought. You know, an outlier would have been more at a, at a T-Mobile where they gave better promotional activity towards the XR in terms of upfront uh, payments you had to put down to get the phone. But clearly in our survey, the XR is off to a great start in North America, and that's what led to our cuts today. Could your price target get lowered again if uh, tariffs and the relationship with China worsens? It could, yes. Yeah. So it, we still have a buy in the stock with $125 billion of buyback, and we think there's over 700 million unique new iPhone users. So we think the long-term uh, growth for Apple is quite strong still. But on the short-term, um, iPhones certainly drive the estimates of the model. And, you know, should things happen in China with tariffs that hurt iPhone sales, you know, that would impact our price target. Mike, do, do you feel like you're a little late to the party for this downgrade relating to this particular reason? It feels uh, like quite a, quite a few of your competitors have done so already. Do you think it might have found a bottom based on this reason of XR demand? Yeah, I think that's a fair point. Uh, we, we do track suppliers. We cover suppliers into Apple. So you know, what we've done here is we do a more demand-driven survey to try to get more color. Apple has more and more choices on the iPhone, so we're trying to get more granular into where we're seeing some weakness. So what's maybe different about our call today is it's more demand-related, where I think you've seen quite a few supplier-related uh, order cuts. And we, we do cover Apple suppliers also, and that did play into our thought process as we had derivative notes out today on suppliers into Apple where we cut their estimates also. But just to be clear, you think it's going higher from here. I mean, your target was cut, and you're sounding pretty bearish about demand, but you still see it 225. Yeah, we have a one-year price target methodology, so looking out longer term, we do think at these levels the shares are oversold. We think a lot of the weaker iPhone out-of-the-gate demand is priced into the stock. So that's why we kept our buy rating, and our price target still you know, represents a buy rating where the stock is today.